you know, because for most of us, English is not our first language. Um, when you start out, you, you, there's not much you can say to God except thank you. And sometimes when you say thank you, it seems like you, you are repeating the same thing over and over again. And you sometimes reach a point where you say, but God, you know I'm grateful. And if you are not careful, you stop saying thank you. And, and then when we are like, but why are you not saying thank you? Like, but God knows I'm grateful. So you are not consistently and constantly saying thank you to God for God. You are doing it for you. Because when you live a life of gratitude, gratitude drives out certain things without you asking them to leave. So in the village where I come from, or in the town where I come from, I, I, I never really know if it's a town or a village, but one day if you do get the opportunity to come, you can determine whether it's a town or a village. It's called Dendron, on, on, on your way to Zim using, not the IN1, using the other road, I, I forgot the name of the road now. So, um, there are snakes where I come from. Well, there are, there are snakes in a lot of places, but the reason why we get to see a lot of snakes is because we are at the end of the town. Uh, so, our, it's our house, it's one, one row of other houses, then it's Ganga, and it's Ganga, it's serious, like, you know, I, I always used to say to my dad when he was alive, Papa, when are you staying at Kruger National Park? Because he would take pictures of the animals that he sees. Those animals don't live with people. But it's because he stay and it was not witchcraft, it's just nature. Uh, he, he is, and so you can kill a snake every time you see it. And now I don't know the English name of this plant. Or you can plant this other plant around your house that repels the snakes. The snakes won't come because of the plant. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to pray and say, plant be effective in the name of Jesus. You don't have to fast and you don't have to encourage the plant to do its work. The only thing that you have to do is plant it. And it being there will repel the snakes and the snakes won't come into your house. So a life of gratitude will make you think there are no snakes around you. Because it will repel the negative things. You know, if you look at us, why do we get into depression? And, 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 and I'm not talking about where you can explain and you say there are chemical imbalances, etc. I'm talking about where your situation is so severe and so bad that it leads you to a depression. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We get into that depression because we are focusing so much on how dire and on how bad our situation is that we fail to see the other things that are working. Have you ever had a pimple, man? A pimple? You know when you have a pimple, when you look at the mirror, you miss all the other clear spots. All you see is the pimple. You remember there was that story, I, yeah, that advert, I don't remember what it was. It was uh, advertising Oxy something, I don't remember. It. But it was saying zit, 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 and everywhere you go zit, zit. You remember that advert? So, if you are the type of person that sees the pimple and you don't see everything else, don't say, hey, I don't want to focus on the people anymore. I don't want to focus on the people anymore. Just focus on the areas that are working. If your ears are big and ugly, focus on your eyes. Focus on your nose. Go on. If everything is going wrong, focus on your cheeks. What can go wrong with your cheeks? Like you see what I'm saying? So the reason why our situation drives us into, into a bad mood, into depression, into frustration, is because we have not planted that gratitude around us. The gratitude that will repel things. You don't have to deal with them one by one. The gratitude will just repel them. <laughs> when people are complaining that there's traffic, you say, I'm so grateful that today in the taxi, I got to meditate. <laughs> and I'm so, if you, you have uh, these, most of you always have headphones, I'm so grateful that I got to rest and listen to an audio Bible or and listen to an audio book or listen to a new album I've been meaning to listen to. Other people are like, hey, what's happening? Hey, the traffic is so bad. Hey, and, and instead of focusing on what is not going right, you are focusing on what is going right. Sure. Gratitude does not come naturally to us. You have to cultivate a habit of gratitude. Don't say, now nah, I'm like this, I'm a complainer. My mother was a complainer. Her mother was a complainer. And her mother's mother was a complainer. In our family, complaining is hereditary. It's in our genes. Don't say that. Don't accept that. Don't say, now nah, I'm like this, I worry about everything. Instead of 
worry, instead of complaining, instead of frustration, instead of always zoning in on problems, teach your mind and your heart to be grateful. Look for something to be grateful about. When we are at the AGMs, some people are very eloquent. Like I because I heard you talking about a, a mini AGM. Some people are very eloquent. But their problem is, even when they raise their hand, the person they are addressing the question to, as soon as they raise their hand, your heart rate goes up. Because as eloquent as you are, you are using your gift of words to only see the problems. When you raise your hand, you are telling us of everything that went wrong the whole year. Just this year, Omore Makat. Something that is going well. Shock us. Raise your hand and say, Executive team or social committee, I just wanted to appreciate that no matter how difficult it was, we had service every Sunday. It got you beaten up. 
the good deed that you, you did is imprisoning you. What is your response? Why me, Lord? God, I've been serving you so well. How can you allow them to do this to me? God, why do you not strike them with like me? This is so unfair. When I was in high school, you can imagine a long time ago, in the 90s, there were three ladies, two ladies who used to sing a song. Till when, till when, till when, till when. Do you hear it? Till when, till when, till when. Till when, till when, till when. How long? That yes. Tell me, Lord, who? I said, guys, tell me, Omanya Mudi. <laughs> so, but most of us, when we are going through challenges, that is our response. If a person can listen to your conversation with God, you sound like Utetisa <laughs> Unkurunku. You sound like you know better than God. You sound like you want to advise God. God, you know what? You should have done it like this. Take it from me, man, the one that you created. You should have done it in this better way. This is a more effective way to do it. Don't be sending your children to prison now. Do better, boys. But they did not leave. They had every right to explain to God or God. The reason why we are casting out demons in the name of Jesus is because we were instructed by Jesus. Why are we now in prison? They had every right to say that. But that was not their response. Their response was praying and singing hymns. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and, in, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Your gratitude, your praise, your worship, your thanksgiving will not only deal with your chains, they will deal with the chains of the other people who are listening to your singing. Amen. You know, you don't have to worry saying now my voice is angel. You can just do poetry of the songs. <laughs> okay, way. Those who can sing, we speak. You can't say, I am not a worshiper. This singing is for the worshippers. So what happened? They were not singing, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. No, no singing that. They were singing songs of worship and adoration to God. Why am I saying they were not singing, break every chain? Because if you are singing, break every chain, the chains break and the door open, you run out. So their focus was not on what God must do to free them. Their focus was on worshiping God. That's why even after they were free, they were not in a rush to leave. Because whether you are in prison or you are at home, you are with God. Amen. And when you are with God, wherever you are is the right place. So the reason why you complain about where you are is because your reality is greater than the presence of God in your life. When the presence of God in your life is greater, you don't worry about where you are because you are with God wherever you are. So the chains, they have broken, the doors are open. The jailer woke up. This guy, another give me a shot and he sleeps. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew the sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Now, if God releases me that miraculously, <laughs> when I meet the believers, guys, you don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says they encourage the believers. Like, guys, what about the bubu bubu bubu? What up? They change that. Guys, you won't believe none of the prisoners left. No one was going to guess why you saw us at the man. That guy had us away. Pull out that hair. Encouraged the believer 
us. When you live a life of gratitude, Bazalwani, even the miraculous will follow you. When you live a life of gratitude, you are creating the stage for God to be God. When you are constantly speaking about your gratitude, even those who are around you, God is like, it's like when you don't have something, man, like you live in a small house and your friend lives in a bigger house. But every time I'm so grateful for my house. Come on, boy, you are saying in a cuckoo when it's raining, you have to take one beer and, 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 and patch the, the roof. But you are so grateful. Your friend who was unhappy with the house bigger than yours starts to realize I can't complain the way I'm complaining if Mancha is happy staying where she stays. When I tell my story, that I spent nine years here at VET. I mean, I could tell it in a very depressing state. Why did they tell What if I was doing <laughs> 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 you guys know something that I don't know? I don't understand what's happening in this church. Listen, I can tell the story of how God was punishing me with failure. I can tell the story of how uh, you know, the demons and the witches in my village even make sure that I lose my bazaar. But when I tell the story of why and how I spent my nine years at birth, I speak a story of, you know what, Nike Thara, guys. God, I was making sure that some of the things I was doing them twice. Opportunity for great joy. Yeah. 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 
When trouble comes, consider it an opportunity for pure joy. You know when my father passed, my father passed in a very bad accident. He uh, collided with a truck, the truck caught fire and he was bent to ashes. And after he died, we couldn't bury him because the law states that if you cannot identify a person in, because they are bent beyond recognition, you need to do DNA tests before you bury them. So we were waiting, we didn't know how long these DNA tests are going to take. You know, in the government, they were saying there's a backlog, hey, hey, Johnny, Johnny. And then now we are staying at home for, for days and we don't know when we are going to bury my father. But in that period of being unable to bury my father, at, at our church, they called a prayer. Half past five in the morning, they called a prayer and we were praying every morning at half past five. And we were praying for the, te for the process of the DNA test to be accelerated so that we can bury my father and continue with our lives. We're not praying to raise him. We're praying. <laughs> <laughs> the first one or two days were, were difficult for us. I mean, I remember, you know, when you are in prayer, you just cry. After, after around day three, yeah. those prayers became a vehicle to show people what, how you behave when you are going through tribulations. When we were praying and, and thanking God and, and thanking God that someone knows someone. No. When we were encouraging our other family members who were on the call, who never even knew that you could pray on Zoom. <laughs> even at the funeral when we gave a speech, my father's friend said, when I came here I was so emotional, I was afraid that I was going to die, to cry. But when I saw these children speaking and being so strong, I said, I want to Listen, the way you respond to tribulation, remember, standard procedure. This is an opportunity for you to have great joy. Count, count it, consider it pure joy when you go through trials and tribulations. Don't worry that you fail the first few times. Like us when we were starting out and we were crying too much and we were falling and we were fainting. But after some time we said, no, I can't fail every day. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there has to come a point when your response to trial and tribulations is scriptural, mm -hmm. not emotional. Yeah. Yeah. There has to come a point in your Christian life where your knee-jerk reaction is biblical. People were saying, no, 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 you are doing too well, you must be in denial. <laughs> when they look at you facing trials and tribulations, because they can't fathom how you are still saying, oh. when, you don't have, when you don't have rest, mm. when you are a hope or advert, yeah. they don't know how you are still saying. After some time, they should look at you and they should say, this is how a Christian behaves Man. when he, is, he or she is going through a difficult time. After being dumped two or three times, yeah. stop in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dapa, you must break into song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. Your is at some point. The natural, the obvious response to trials and tribulations must be biblical. And that response is pure joy. That response is great joy. Why are you joyful? But are you crazy? Why are you joyful when things are tough? Because I know the owner of the situation. I'm not grateful because my dad died. I am grateful because the owner of the situation says of himself in Psalm 68, he is the father to the fatherless. But hey, now I don't know my father. I was not raised by my father. What do you mean when you are born again, you don't know your father when your father in heaven is always with you? So our responses must be biblical. You can't go to Kumbule Kaya where they look for your father.
all situations must be biblical. Mm -hmm. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Yeah. With, how, how is your endurance going to grow? How is your perseverance going to grow? Sure. These challenges are not here to kill you. Mm -hmm. The challenges are here to grow you. Amen. When we prune trees, you prune a tree, you prune a tree, now it looks like it's dying. You look like you have reduced its size. Mm -hmm. But what you need to understand is that you are pruning it so that it can grow better. Sometimes your tree is growing that way into the neighbor's house. You can't just say, oh, tree, be free. <laughs> <laughs> you cut it and after you have cut it, you're like, yo, the tree used to be big. Back in the days when we used to relax our hair, sometimes when you go, your hair is growing, now it's coming nicely, it's growing. When you go to the, to the salon, remember, yeah, to the salon, and that's what they call it now, not the salon. When you go to the salon, then they cut your hair, you're like, ah, oh, they made my hair shorter. Because you know they are giving it a chance to grow healthy. Yeah. The challenges in your life are not here to kill you. They, you honor, all are wrong, all are so. How many challenges? All are so. When you are a helpful, when you are too old, you are going to have problems. Now, what are the challenges doing? They are straightening you. It's un un uncomfortable. Yeah. They walk straight. Have a good posture. Mm -hmm. So, but when you are going through that pruning, it appears as if the challenges are here to kill you. The difference between the, pers the person every time when you try to prove them, they go, ouch, ouch, yo, you're not yakwa, you're not touche. And the person says, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are strengthening me. Thank you, Lord, that I'm getting strong. Thank you, Lord, that when I walk straight, I'll be able to walk faster and longer. Thank you, Lord, that I will no longer be putting pressure on my knees. You are both going through the same process. One has a biblical response. The other one is complaining, uh, powered by the devil, powered by hell. We must respond biblically, scripturally. We must respond kingdomically. Yes. Your response must demonstrate that you are a kingdom citizen. Yes. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So cha the challenges are not here to finish you. Even some of the things that you think you will never survive, you are going to survive them. And when you come out on the other side, you will be perfect. Job says, when you have tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Mm -hmm. So for us who did process engineering, you know that for you to remove the impurities, you have to raise the temperature so high that all the impurities will live on their own and only the metal will survive. And when you take out its pure, when the gold is going through the fire, the gold can say, yo, I'm better, yo, I'm polaya. Yo, this is so hot, this is so unfair. What the gold does not know is that it's going through the fire so that the impurities can live. The fire will take the impurities out. The gold just has to chill in the fire yeah. and come out pure. Okay. Just like you and I. Don't be in a rush to come out of certain things. Mm. Don't be in a hurry. Now that the doors are open, go and now walk it in or we are walk it in. You were supposed to minister to the jail. Yeah. You were supposed to live, not, not like a fugitive. Because if you live like a fugitive, you have to leave town immediately. But if you live the way they left, then you are able to still go back to the church and encourage them before you leave. So some of the things when we are going through them, if we have a heart of gratitude, we are still able to hear God when we are going through those things. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Don't worry about anything. Guys, anything. Even if you're, you still have DP, what is your Yama called now? What is your Yama called? It's just called a Yama. Okay. So, sometimes, uh, uh, but you guys, I don't think it happens to you. You find that it's at the end of the year, eh? Your year mark is so low that in the exam you need more than 100 percent. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that thing? Guys, how are you going to get more than 100 percent? It's not available. <laughs> but on top of that, the whole year you could only manage 35. <laughs> There's no way that you're going to get 100 percent now. <laughs> and you are. You are, and, and when you are in that situation, and the Bible says, don't worry about it. You are like, oh, the Bible doesn't understand what we are facing. Oh, you are like, the Bible, you are like, no, the, the, the problem with the times when the Bible was written is that there was no bed. That's why they wrote things like this. But listen, whatever it is, 
that you are going through, the Bible says don't worry about anything. Yeah. Yeah. We have just come out of conference, man. And I remember at some point, some of the people uh, who were in, 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 in the conference team were thinking, maybe let's cancel the conference because we don't have enough money. So today when I was speaking to them, and we were talking about catering, oh, they didn't get catering, they cooked for themselves because the quotation for catering was 40,000. They said at that time we didn't have 40,000. Then they're like, Ish, but now we have it and we even have them. Ooh. Imagine if you were worrying about the 40,000 and it still came. Whether you worried or you no. didn't, it still came. Hey. Now look at you. You have been overeating. Now you have gained 60 kilograms. <laughs> or the opposite, you are not eating. Now look at you. <laughs> you must be fine. So, but whether you worried or you didn't, it didn't change the result. <laughs> Another, I've heard a definition of worry called being on a rocking chair. You, you feel like you're doing something. You're rocking. You feel like you're doing something. You're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. So teach yourself. Teach yourself as a young person yeah. not to worry about anything. Amen. Teach you, and, and sometimes you'll have to make confessions and declarations for yourself. When you are feeling the worry coming in, you have to rebuke it out loud. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, I, I must not worry, I will not worry. The Bible says, I must not be anxious, I will not be anxious because now I'm a kingdom girl, now I'm a kingdom boy. I do things according to the kingdom, I don't do things according to my logic, my thinking, how I'm analyzing these situations, my projections, ganjani, ganjani. I do think, when the Bible says I should not worry, I don't worry, I don't ask for it. But if I don't worry, who will make sure that things are well? God will make sure that things are well. Don't worry. <clears throat> don't worry about anything. Instead, <clears throat> pray about everything. So, when you stop worrying, you don't do nothing. And we find you sitting like this. And you're like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to worry. That's why I'm <laughs> No. You replace worry with prayer. The opposite of worry is not worrying. The opposite of worry in the kingdom is prayer. So when something is troubling you, you bring it to God in prayer. Amen. Pray about everything. You worry about nothing, you pray about everything. Then it gives you a formula of how to pray. One, tell God what you need. <coughs> tell God what... It doesn't say, tell God how he must deliver it. Sure. Sure. It says, tell him what you need. Mm -hmm. And many of us have adjusted our prayers. Because before I told God what I need, I had to calculate how God was going to do it. And I realized that it's impossible. That DP situation, I, that earmark situation, I realized that it's impossible. I just said, God, I, I won't pray that I must pass. I will just pray that next year let them take me back. <laughs> so you downgraded your prayer because you wanted to tell God how to do it. Yeah. Let me tell you now, I did chemistry three. I failed it once. Well, I failed it again. I mean, the <laughs> again is coming. And then I failed it the third time. Hey, I was like, hey, I'll never fail. I'll never pass chemistry. <laughs> now I'm supposed to go and do it for the fourth time. <laughs> you know what? The dean of chemical engineering decided that in chemical engineers did chemistry one and two. Ah, ah, ah. Imagine if I had prescribed to God. I wouldn't have known that they now nah, I didn't pass chemistry third. They canceled it. I can't yeah. tell you. <laughs> We could do it this way and 
sure it let them do my baby. Yes. Yes. But tell God what you need. Yes. Listen, I can really like a process of how you pray. Yes. And thank him for all he has done. But suddenly there is power in remembering what God has done for you. Yeah. For some of us, the fact that you are advert is a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. For some of us, the fact that you still have a fighting chance is a miracle. Yeah. For some of us, the fact that you are still born again is a miracle. Yeah. For some of us, the fact that on a Sunday night, you are not somewhere turning it up, yeah. but you have decided to be in the house of the Lord, that's a miracle. <laughs> when you start to count your blessings and name them one by one, there is something powerful that happens in you and for you. Then, the Bible says, then you will experience God's peace. Yeah. Which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. Jesus. <laughs> Find yourself a handful of scriptures that will teach you to have gratitude. Find yourself songs. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the kind of I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and for he has made me glad. Ah, such an answer will be English one. Give money, Jesus. What are you singing when you come up here? be Some of the songs, even though they are at church, hey. Hey, yawa, yawa, lembe, yawa, yawa. No, man, find other songs that are full of the word that will encourage you, that will say to you, I may be going through the fire. Yeah. But the fourth man, there is another in the fire. Oh, wait, all the genres. You must have a repertoire that takes you through the fire. When you are supposed to be crying, look on me, when I eat Jesus. 